What's going on guys? I'm Redbeard with treesavages.com and in this video I'm going to share with you guys the five things that need to be included in every tree removal contract. <clears throat> that way you can cover your ass and you can protect your customers. So stay tuned. All right guys, so five things that you need in every tree removal contract. First things first, you gotta have contracts. If you don't have contracts and you're doing tree work, then you're leaving a ton of money on the table and you're exposing yourself to a ton of unnecessary liability. So if you don't have contracts, swing on over to treesavages.com, grab your template tree service contracts, modify them so you can use them in your business today. Now, the five things that you need to have in every single tree removal contract, first things first, a general scope of business, right? And so that just says, hey, uh, in my contracts, it says, hey, I do hazard tree removal and wildfire mitigation. I'm covered with this much insurance and we offer you know, the best services that we possibly can, whatever, right? So that's the first thing that you wanna have uh, in your contracts. The second thing you wanna have is a detailed description of the job specific work right so I'm talking about specific numbers of trees specific locations specific types of trees um, you might also want to include uh, some additional services that you're offering maybe raking stump grinding you know the off-site disposal be specific include everything that you're gonna offer to that customer and um, this is where you build value so um, add as much as you can be as specific as you can and uh, be as professional as you can when you're writing up this job description. Now, the third thing you gotta have is a performance window. So that just basically means like, hey, you know, everybody wants to know when, they're, when you're gonna get to them, right? So uh, I sell on a 30-day performance window. That means I'm gonna get to my customers between now and 30 days from now. If they need a price drop, or if, the, if it, the price is just too high for them, I can give them a price drop by moving them out to 90 days. Um, but that performance window is how I'm gonna kind of modulate that price, right? So um, I know guys that'll do uh, tree work next day and there's a premium for that. So if you're doing tree work next day, be sure that you're charging a premium for that work. Um, the fourth thing that you wanna have on every tree removal contract is the price and how it's calculated, right? So I tell all my customers, I say, hey, our prices are based off of a formula. It's based off of our, our annual operating expenses and a base cost. Um, we adjust for liability and volume. And when you get the margin multiplier, you'll be able to display that price to them, select a down payment, and it'll auto calculate that down payment. So now you can display it to them, it says, this is how much it's gonna cost you, this is what your down payment is, and this is how long it's gonna take us to get to you. So, number four, gotta have the price in the contract. And the fifth thing you wanna have in the contract is rock solid terms and conditions. So, right here, got all the industry specific terms and conditions to include the pet waste clause. So, if you show up on the job and um, you know there's pet waste in the yard, you know that's in the contract here. And there's a, a clause for that. So, you know, nobody should be doing tree work in and around pet waste. It's a biohazard, it's unsafe, it's unsanitary, and quite frankly, it's disgusting. So, pet waste clauses in here. We've got all the other uh, tree service industry specific terms and conditions as well. And so, you know, that's it. That's the five things that you need to have in any tree removal contract. If you want to get the margin multiplier, swing on over to treesavages.com. I'm Redbeard. I appreciate you guys for checking this one out, and I will see you next time.